During this holiday season, you likely encountered public nativity scenes depicting the birth of Christ, presenting the family, with very rare exceptions, as white. And the same can be said of his ubiquitous adult portrait, with fair skin and hair a radiant gold and eyes fixed on the middle distance. In this segment, which originally aired in 2020, Eloise Blondio, our resident graduate of Harvard Divinity School, traces how the historically dubious image became American canon and its consequences. The first picture of Jesus that Detroit pastor Mbayu Chui remembers seeing belonged to his grandmother. It hung in her bedroom. And of course, it was an image of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy. That picture bothered me, but I never would say anything. You know, I dare not tell my grandmother, would you please take that picture off the wall? <laughs> the eyes moved like it was following you around the room. And at night, in the dark, it glowed. In the 60s and 70s, we had a lot of stuff that glowed in the dark. So, <laughs> And when you say the eyes were moving, it, the eyes weren't actually moving. They just kind of <laughs> felt like they were, right? No, they, they weren't actually moving. But, you know, as a child, you have an imagination. He saw that image of Jesus, pale skin, long beachy waves, everywhere growing up in Detroit. I d couldn't explain why, but I, I just didn't feel comfortable with that picture. Of course, you see the same images when Jesus is portrayed anywhere in popular culture. He was 12 years old in 1967 when his city turned into a war zone. Oh, the motor pit is Snipers rolled the city. Gunfire flickered from neighborhood to neighborhood. Whole blocks smoldered. The smell was everywhere. For five days, the so-called Detroit riots were credited with sparking the Black Power movement. Over 40 people died. In the aftermath, Chewie drove down Linwood Street with his parents, like he did every weekend. As usual, they passed the statue of Jesus that loomed over the intersection. Seven foot tall, arms outstretched, long hair, white stone. But on this day, Jesus looked different. They painted the statue black. So, of course, the news spread all over the city. Everybody was, whoa. Decades later, a house painter named Joe Nelson would claim credit. He said he didn't want to pray to a white man. Before he covered Jesus' toes with black enamel paint, he wondered if some people would still stop and kneel at his feet, and apparently not. Soon, some white counter-protesters got involved. And then about a week later, they had painted it white again. And then a couple of days later, it was black again. This happened at least three times. And then, I guess, after the third time, they said, OK, forget it. We're not going to keep going back and forth. And they just left it black, and it's still black to this day. <laughs> Sacred Heart, the Catholic seminary that owned the statue, said it intended to keep the statue black to commemorate the 67 riots. Sure enough, they repaint Jesus' black skin every few years. Mbayu Chui, who ministers at a church a mile down the road, still sees it every weekend. In 60s Detroit, the black Jesus signified a victory in a thriving theological debate. But the question is far from settled. Whenever this country reckons with its ongoing legacy of white supremacy, Jesus comes up, this summer included. An activist called Sean King issued the following demand on Twitter, quote, all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down. They are a gross form of white supremacy, created as tools of oppression. So don't be surprised when they come for your church. Why wouldn't they? No one is stopping them. There is no widespread reports of activists tearing down statues of Jesus. Well, President Trump says unnamed forces want to tear down statues of Jesus. Now they're looking at Jesus Christ. The white Jesus image isn't going anywhere. But where and how did it become the reigning image? Certainly, actors cast as Jesus have almost always been fair-skinned guys with blue eyes. In a long list of cinematic Jesuses, we have, for instance, Willem Dafoe. Father, I'm sorry for being a bad son. And Christian Bale. Who are my kinsmen? But those who hear the word of God and accept it. 
In a striking break from precedent, white blue-eyed actor Jim Caviezel, who played Jesus in Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ, had brown eyes on screen. And in an apparent nod to history, he also spoke Aramaic. When people of color have played Jesus, it's more often in more light-hearted portrayals, like John Legend in Jesus Christ Superstar or on Family Guy. I rode into town on an <laughs> Yo mama's <laughs> Or the TV sitcom Black Jesus. Oh, oh, Negro of little faith. All right, Jesus, what you got for me today? I've been good. Whatever you want, man. I need the numbers to the lotto. The lotto. When black actors play Jesus, it's not seen as, you know, realistic. Just because it makes you feel uncomfortable doesn't mean it has to change. You know, I mean, yeah. Jesus was a white man, too. That's Megyn Kelly on Fox News back in 2013. And she's wrong. Most historians, Christian or not, agree that a guy called Jesus existed 2,000 years ago and had a following. There's some contention over whether, you know, he rose from the dead and was the son of God, but scholarly consensus is that he would not have resembled the fair-haired surfer we all know. He probably had darker skin, hair, and eyes.